YouTube, it's Janet and today I've got my November wrap up. I managed to complete 10 books in November that I'm really really pleased with and I'm going to go through them now in order of the lowest star rating I gave them to the highest. This month with my 10 books um, I've read one two star read, two three star reads, five four star reads and two five star reads. So the first one I've got to show you is Queer, a graphic history by Meg John Barker and Julia Scheel and I gave this two stars. Um, I read it as part of Nonfiction November. I wanted something that was going to give me uh, a brief introduction to queer theory, a quick snapshot and I thought that doing it via a graphic representation would be a really good way of doing it but basically it turned out to be a very dry textbook that they just added some pictures to and I found it quite laborious and boring. Um, so I ended up just skimming through it. The next one is a three star read for me and that's a short story collection and this is Black Vodka, Ten Stories by Deborah Levy. And I have to say that I've pretty much forgotten all of the stories already. I can't actually pinpoint one that stood out for me and it was a bit of a meh. It, 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 I read it in one sitting. It was you know, it passed an hour, It was I gave it three stars at the time, um, but I can't actually remember anything in particular about any of the stories, I've already forgotten them, so it was that one. The next three star read is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates, again this was part of my non-fiction November, and it, I started this quite a while back and I actually managed to finish it in November because I had to read it in small chunks and put it down because I found it um, at times quite distressing, at times upsetting, very thought provoking um, but by by the time I was getting to the end of it I felt it was becoming a little bit preachy and the point was a little bit too laboured um, so it is an important book, it's definitely worth a read um, but I, I just it all just got a bit too much for me at the end. Next we're on to four star books so uh, for me I read Sunstones volume 3 and very volume 4 and this is by Stepan Sejic and again um, this series just gets better and better I'm absolutely loving it it's the story of um, a BDSM relationship between um, a lesbian couple and it's done in such a sensitive way it's actually um, breaking down some barriers and taboos I think reading these and it is also um, educating me in a way that you know just because people may be different to yourself it's normal everything is normal and you know and it isn't how it is portrayed when you sort of see things like that portrayed via porn and stuff like that that actually that isn't how um, BDSM is in a loving, um, trusting relationship. The next four star read is another graphic novel and this is Nailbiter Volume 2, uh, Bloody Hands. And this is by Joshua Williamson. I'm sorry if you can hear my husband singing again. He's cooking in the kitchen and he's singing. Um, this is um, the second instalment in the Nailbiter um, series and it's all based in um, a town called Bookaroo in Oregon where uh, 16 out of 23 of the most notorious serial killers happen to have come from and it's about the investigation that takes place in the town and the creepy goings on that have started up again and it's dark and it's mysterious and it's spooky and I absolutely love it. It's very atmospheric and yeah this is sort of the colour palette that you're going to get. I'm loving it. Um, bit of a, if you like a bit of a spooky, creepy read, I'm anticipating the rest of the series maybe in Santa's stocking. So the next uh, book is, um, I'm on to four star reads now, so the next book is another one that I read as part of Nonfiction November and this is The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery and if you look at my Nonfiction November wrap up I um, go on about this at length. It's absolutely fascinating read it's uh, full of interesting facts it sort of demystifies some of these amazing creatures that don't appear to sort of be anything other than just sort of these strange little bags of stuff but it, it they're so intelligent they're so interesting absolutely amazing thoroughly recommend that one the next four star read is The Monster's Wife by Kate Horsley and this I finished following um, the Spookathon, and this is it's it's only got a few 
ratings on Goodreads and I think it's been seriously overlooked as a book. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, I don't know if you can just see the artwork on that, um, on the cover. And this is, if anybody's ever familiar with uh, Frankenstein or you've read Frankenstein, there's a part in the book where Victor Frankenstein goes off to a, a remote island in, in the Scottish um, Highlands, well, in the Orkney Islands, and because the monster wants him to make him a companion and it, this is where the monster's wife starts this is the, the tale of what happens there in great depth and it is just so good it is atmospheric it is spooky it is creepy it's very gothic um, the the place of the Orkney Islands itself is a huge character in the book it follows um, the, sto the stories of May and Una two friends on the island and May starts to work for Victor Frankenstein, who's got the big rented the big house on the island um, as a domestic um, servant, and a friend Una, who is um, obviously unwell during the um, the book. And I don't want to give too much away, but you don't necessarily see what's coming. You think you do, but you don't necessarily see what's coming. And it's just fabulous. It's so well done. Absolutely brilliant read. Um, it's it's definitely um, an underhyped read and if you're looking for something a bit different I would definitely seek it out. So on to the five star reads. So again another one that I read a part of non-fiction November and that is Depressive Illness, The Curse of the Strong and again you, there's more about this in my non-fiction no November wrap up. This is a, a brilliant sort of overview of what depression actually is and how it affects people and it's well worth a read and like I say there's more about it in my non-fiction um, wrap up and yeah it was five stars absolutely brilliant book and the final five star read is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon and I, there's a little sheep there but all these sort of I don't know if you can see the the title is debossed uh, uh, yeah I put an egg in the pan yeah and it looks like your breasts great thanks I'm going to be editing that out, you do know, don't you? What? I will be editing that out, don't you? do know that, don't you? I'll oh, so you're still filming? Yeah. Oh, sorry, babe. I thought you'd done. Nearly. Uh, and this uh, is Joanna Cannon's first book, and what a fantastic debut it is. It's set in the summer of 1976 in a cul-de-sac in um, a town in the Midlands, and it... it for me, as I was a small child at the time, similar age to the two girls who um, the story revolves around, I was right there. Uh, Joanna Cannon just got that whole mood of that summer perfectly. The whole um, growing up in the 70s in a cul-de-sac where people did all know each other's business and know everybody. Um, and one of the neighbours' um, wives actually goes missing and the two girls then start to, to unpick what might have led to this and it unearths a lot of the things that are going on behind closed doors in the cul-de-sac and all the neighbours and things like that and it is absolutely beautifully written, it reads like poetry in places it is just so good but you feel the heat and I remember there was like no rain for so long I will certainly be seeking out anything else that Joanna Cannon writes. It was an absolutely superb read. Can't recommend it highly enough. So that was it for the books I read in November. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these or if you've got any comments. Let's chat down below in the comments box. Um, keep reading. I will see you all soon. Bye!